Hi, I'm Les Martire and in this video I'm going to show you how to process black and white film. First thing we're going to do is um, get the equipment out. So as you can see on the bench here I've got um, tanks, light proof tanks. These small ones are 35mm. This tank will do 120 or 2 rolls of 35 graduated measures, jugs, chemicals um, and most importantly this uh, light proof changing bag so um, none of this process needs to be done in a dark room um, the only critical point is to put the roll of film into the tank inside the changing bag uh, once that's done the changing bags light proof so you kind of put all your equipment in here double zip it up and pop your arms in the sleeves which are light proof crack open the roll of film put it in the tank once the lid's on the tank you can then unzip the bag and the whole process can be done in day okay so um, as i said earlier first step is to put all the equipment into the light proof bag so i have got um, one tank with a lid so i'm going to pop that in um, that's uh, the spool which I'm going to adjust to 120 size, medium format. So that's now the right size for um, the 120 roll of film which I'm going to process. As you can see, they are the same size. So that's the spindle. I'm going to put that in there for the time being and pop the clip on so we don't lose it. Um, put that inside the tank. That's the roll of film. This is uh, a roll of Ilford Pan F, um, which I shot with a an antique Rolleiflex uh, medium format camera. Um, it's probably the second roll of film that I used in that camera. Not long after that, the camera broke, and I've only just recently had it repaired. So um, it'd be interesting to see what that uh, that roll has got on it. I also need a pair of scissors. Um, when you're trying to put the film into the spool uh, it's always a good idea just to trim the corners off um, which you have to do by feel obviously because you're everything zipped up in this light proof bag um, but I've done it many times so uh, I'm sure it'll be fine so that's everything I think I'm going to need to load the film into the light proof tank I'm going to zip the bag up so this is double zip so there's an inner zip which goes in one direction Make sure it's fully zipped, and then the outer zip, which zips up the other way. I'm just going to move some of this equipment over to give it a bit more space. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to put my arms in the sleeves of the changing bag, like so, and we're good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is locate the, the roll of film which I have and feel for the tag which is glued down. Should be able to tear that off. He says. That's open. So now carefully unroll the paper backing until you find the end of the film. That's it. Take the scissors and carefully trim the corners off. One. Two. Okay, so now I'm going to locate the spool. Take that off the spindle. The spool's got two, it's got a tapered um, kind of lug on each end, each side, sorry, which you um, locate and slide the end of the film in. It's a little bit tricky with 120 um, because the film's quite wide and can be um, difficult to get started. But once you get it in to the end of the spool, then you rotate the sides of the spool backwards and forwards, and that should 
um, push the film in to the spool. So almost there. It. and then all we need to do is detach the paper backing from the end of the strip of film it's taped on just with what looks like masking tape so it tears off quite easily okay so the film is onto the spool now I'm going to put the spool on the spindle then pop the clip on the top the clip is there to stop the spool from sliding up and down the spindle um, when you're uh, inverting the tank, if you invert the tank, when you're um, processing it. Okay, so I've put the spill, which is on the spindle, inside the tank, lid on, screw that on nice and firmly, arms out. So, um, unzip the bag, and there we have it. The film is inside the light proof tank. Uh, there's the scissors, there should be two little tiny corners of film which I've trimmed off uh, there and there's the paper backing as you can see there's the strip of what looks like masking tape that's the bit that attached the film to the um, paper backing roll this you can now throw away I tend to whoops, tend to keep the um, keep one or two spare um, film spindles that can go in the bin right so next stage is to prepare the chemicals um, on the bottom of the tank actually there's a scale which tells you um, the quantity of chemical required so um, one uh, 35 millimeter roll needs 375 cc's um, I've got a roll of 120 so that needs 590 um, cc's or millilitres uh, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to round it up to 600 so uh, that means there's enough chemical to cover the whole roll um, and that's quite useful because uh, it's on the tank and each tank has got uh, it, its own scale on so these smaller ones which uh, you can only do a roll of um, 35 mil in here again gives you the quantity of chemical required so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare those. <clears throat> now, um, fixer and stop bath I've got pre-mixed um, because they aren't one shot. The developer I use is a one shot developer. Um, so you mix up a batch just enough, uh, do one process and then it is thrown away um, as opposed to the fixer and stop bath which you can use repeatedly. Uh, they're in these concertina bottles. The important thing about the chemicals is to, when you store them, um, they need to be stored with as little air in as possible because the air um, causes the chemical to oxidise and become useless. So the concertina bottles you can actually push down so that there's very little air in the top of the bottle, screw the lid on, hence why they're kind of short like this. They're actually quite tall. So. Um, let's get those poured out and uh, the developer mixed up and then we can start with the process. Right, so I've poured out the stop bath and the fixer. Um, the processing is sort of temperature critical so um, I use an app to figure out the uh, processing time and uh, temperature. So um, I'm using uh, Ilford Ilfotech DDX um, is a good developer for fine grain um, and it's mixed at one to four so one part uh, developer chemical four parts water uh, first thing we need to do is get some water to the right temperature so the process is done at 20 degrees room temperature in here is about 18 at the moment and this um, graduated measure is saying about 22 degrees so I'm going to put a bit more cold in there just to uh, try and get that to the right temperature it's still a bit warm so pour some of that out okay 
that's about there, 20 degrees. So I'm measuring out 480 millilitres of water, which is at the right temperature. Uh, right, and then we need 120 millilitres of the uh, developing chemical, the Ilford, Ilfotec. So, 120 millilitres of this. Which is there. Put the lid back on that. Okay, so. Pop that in there. That's our developer solution ready. Okay, so we're ready to go. Um, all we need to do now is put the developer in um, and start the timer. So I've got the app on my phone which is ready to go and I'm going to pull that in. And start the timer once all the chemical is in the tank because the film is fully immersed. Okay. So that gives you a little indicator on how to uh, agitate the film. So when you first put it in, it's the first 30 seconds. So we'll agitate that for 30 seconds. Okay, so the film's been in the tank for seven minutes. Um, I'm gonna give it one more agitation. agitator out um, in preparation to dispose of the developer. Eight minutes. Once we've tipped out the um, developing solution we'll then put in the stop bath which um, stops the chemical process, the developing process and uh, once that's done that goes back into the jug because we can reuse it We'll then put in the fixer, which fixes the image onto the film. Okay, I'm just watching the timer. 7 minutes 55. So, there we go, here's the countdown, and that's it. So, that's the developing stage completed. Now we're going to pour in the stop bath. Taking care not to spill it everywhere. Okay, so <clears throat> that goes in for one minute, which you agitate continually. As you can see, for the space that I'm using, you don't need a massive amount of room. Really, it's useful to have a sink uh, with running water. So, to be honest, you could do this in in your kitchen um, as long as you clean up afterwards, because the chemicals are a bit unpleasant. So, if you splash the chemicals around, you need to clean those up. But uh, you don't actually need a dark room to uh, do your own processing of the film. And what I'll probably do once this is processed and dried, I'll then use my scanner to scan it into the computer. Work with the images from there. Okay, so that's the stop bath done. I'm going to pull that back into the jug so I can put it back into the concertina bottle and keep that to use again. Right, now I'm going to put the fixer in. button and again we're going to agitate for the first minute uh, that needs to be in for five minutes um, then we go on to rinsing while the fixer is in the tank I'm just going to put the stock bath back into the concertina bottle so we can uh, use that another time 
Okay, so you basically push the bottle down until the fluid comes almost to the top. Screw the cap on nice and tight, and there you go. The fix has now been in for four and a half minutes, um, so I'm going to get ready to uh, pull that back into the jug. Once that's done, then we go on to rinsing the film. That needs to be rinsed for uh, ten, ten minutes. Um, yeah, final rinse for ten minutes, and then uh, we can open the tank and look at the negatives. Okay, here we go. Right, pop that under there, under running water, and leave that to rinse. Final rinse, and let's have a look and see whether there's anything on the negatives. Indeed, there is. These look like portraits of my nieces. Yes, they are. Brilliant. As you can see, I think there's a little bit of an issue at the bottom of the film strip. It's not all been shot. I think that's when the camera actually uh, broke. But um, yeah, there's, they look like good clean negatives. Pleased with that. So we'll hang those up to dry. And um, once they're dried off, we can scan them in and uh, see what the images look like. Thanks for watching.